Here we're given a question involving a function, f, it's a vector valued function, and we're asked to compute the Jacobian matrix of f, which we denote by jf. And we're asked to evaluate the matrix at a particular given point or a point associated with a vector a. Okay, so we're going to first of all say compute the Jacobian matrix from this f and then we'll plug in uh, 2, 1, 2 for x, y and z respectively. Yeah? Okay, so again a reasonably easy question and as I keep saying the Jacobian matrix is important say when you're doing change of variables in triple integrals and the like. Okay, so let's just solve this. Now I'm going to write it in the following way where I have partial derivatives of the vector f which we write as basically columns, that's going to be a column vector, that's going to be a column vector, that's going to be a column vector and together side by side they'll make a matrix. Okay, so let's go up to here, differentiate say with respect to x in a component wise fashion and write, write it down as a um, vector. So the first part is going to be 2x, the second component is going to be 2y and the third one is going to be 0. Let's go up to here and differentiate it again component wise with respect to y and write it as a column. So here I'm going to get negative 2y, here I'm going to get 2x and down here I'm going to get 0. Lastly do the same thing differentiating with respect to z. So here I'm going to get 0, here I'm going to get 0, here I'm going to get 1. Okay. So if I want to evaluate this now at the point associated with this vector this is the kind of notation that we have seen. You might see different notation. Basically you take x equals 2, y equals 1, z equals 2, plug them into each component and you've got a matrix. Okay, so if I plug in x equals 2, I'll get 4 there, 4 there, uh, y equals 2, I'll get 2 there negative 2 there, I'll get 0 there, 0 there, 0 there, 0 there, and there's nothing variable about z in here. So that will be my matrix. Okay, here's another example from several variable calculus, vector calculus. We're given a vector valued function g and we're asked to evaluate it at this uh, the point associated with this vector here where f is from a previous problem f, uh, f and a is from a previous, previous problem it's, that's f and that's a so to come up with b what we would do we would take a equals this and plug it into here and we'll get b okay alright so um, let's do that so from a previous example So it will be, um, okay, so we take 2, 1, 2 for x, y, and z respectively and plug them into here. Okay, so uh, if you do that, you're going to get 4 uh, minus 1, which is going to be 3 for the first one. 2xy is going to be uh, 4. And uh, z is just 2. Alright. Okay, so now we can get on with the business of solving this problem. Let's calculate the Jacobian. It's just partial derivatives written as a as columns in a matrix. And then we can plug plug these values in to, to uh, give it some definiteness. Okay, so oh sorry, G sub U and and G sub V. Let me fix it up. So let me just put in this extra column here. I've forgotten the W there. Thank you. All right. So let's go up to each of these components, differentiate them partially with respect to U, V, and W, and then write them as columns. Okay. All right. So we go up here, differentiate with respect to U. I'm going to get 1 there and 0 there. Uh, differentiate with respect to u there. 
differentiate with respect to u there. I'm going to get 1 on w, yep. Okay, let's go move on to the v's now. You can see there's no v's here. Okay, so the column that we're going to put next to that, that first column is just going to be full of zeros. And finally, let's do the w's as in a component-wise fashion. I'm going to differentiate with respect to w. I'll get 2w there. And down here, um, you're going to get something like this. Yeah? So at the point of interest B, we just want to evaluate that matrix or that Jacobian at that point. So the way I, I'm going to do this is have this little subscript to show that you're taking the matrix, or the Jacobian matrix, and you're plugging in a particular value. All right. So for this, I would have um, uh, u equals 3, v equals 4, and w equals 2. All right, so that's going to stay the same. w equals 2 down here will give me 1 half. Down this column, I'm going to have zeros. And then I've got 2w there, which is going to be 4. And here I've got negative u on w squared. So I'll get uh, negative 3 on 2 squared, which is negative 3 on 4. And there you have it. So here is a question involving a composition of functions, g of f, or GOF, and I'm defining h to be the composition. Okay, now the particular functions g and f come from a previous uh, question, so the f is defined here, right? So it's a vector valued function, and the g is defined here. Okay, and we're asked to compute the Jacobian matrix of this composition at this point. Okay, so how do we do it? Well, there is a chain rule available if we want to use it. You don't have to do that, but that's the way I'm going to show you how to do this, this problem first. Okay, so this is the notation I'm going to use, this J sub A of H. We can apply the chain rule. Now, you don't have to apply the chain rule. You can do it uh, in another way, which I'll discuss. And the chain rule is the following, right? It sort of mirrors the idea that we see in a first course in calculus. And again, this comes back to trying to relate the derivatives that we know and love with this Jacobian. So the Jacobian can be thought of a deriv as a derivative because, for example, there's a chain rule, right? Let me show you what it is. Okay, G of F. Okay, so here's the chain rule for the for the for the Jacobian. It's this matrix times this matrix. Okay, no, they both involve derivatives. Okay, so it's just a product, or derivatives, or, or Jacobians, loosely speaking, right? So it's the product of the Jacobians. All right? All right, so we, so we want to compute the Jacobian of G and the Jacobian of F, evaluate the Jacobian of F at the point A, this point here, which is the same point as we had over here, or the same vector associated with the point. And then compute the Jacobian of G and evaluate it at F of A, at that point, okay? So F of A, as we already discussed in a previous example, is this here, okay? So this is actually the Jacobian of G at F of A, because B and F of A are the same things. So we can actually go back and immediately write down, we've already got this matrix, which is half of what we need, and we've already got this matrix from a previous question. So it is just the product of the two uh, matrices. Okay, so let me just write down these from a previous question. Okay, so just a matrix multiplication. 
Okay, so it's this row times this column, that'll give you the, the, the first entry. This row times that, this row times that, that'll give you the top row. And you just, you just keep on going, right? So according to my calcs, this is what you'll get. Okay, chain rule for Jacobi. Now that's not the only way to solve this problem. If you're not comfortable with the chain rule or you don't know it, there, there is another way to do it. What you would do is work out G of F first and then compute the Jacobian of it. 